Okay, I was a graphic designer for um, ooh, a long time. I had my own business for 25 years. Neiman Marcus was my number one account that I had for a long, long, long time. It was the bread and butter. I actually got to work direct with me, uh, Stanley Marcus. Oh, how cool. Many projects was just kind of like talking to the God of, of, you know, merchandising. And he taught me customer service and quality. And it, it, I have taken that through every part of my life and especially in my art. Um, in 2008, when the economy went south, and all of my clients took everything in house. I started painting and I started teaching. You know how sometimes the worst parts of your life end up being the best part? That was the best thing that ever happened. It took a little while to get there, but I always wanted to be an art, an artist, a full time painter. But my college professor said, No, Mel, go do graphic design. You'll come back to it. I go, Yeah, I won't. But I did, and it's the absolute best thing that ever happened. Um, started using golden paints exclusively in 2009, started teaching a lot, kid classes and adult classes and golden found out about me and they asked me to become one of their certified educators. There's about 200 of us across the world and I'm the one for North Texas, which means, I mean, they have watercolors, they have oils i do acrylics everything that i do is an acrylic and it's from fluid acrylics to heavy body acrylics i can teach all of the gels and the pace and all of that knowledge has brought so much to my art where i used to just paint but there are so many different additives that you can use with acrylics that you can't use with oils that you can't use with watercolors that you can use with mixed media it's like my art has absolutely exploded um, I'm getting a lot of recognition now because I'm a lot better than what I used to be. And I think part of it is because I know the materials really well. It's if you know, if you know the backgrounds, if you know what you're working with, it's going to bring your art from here to here. I also do a lot of, because I teach, I am always studying the masters and how they got from here to there and what their techniques were and what their palettes were. And did they want to be an artist or not want to be an artist? And how did they, they become an artist? So I'm constantly, there's a new uh, George O'Keefe book that I put on my Christmas list because I want to learn more about her. So anyway, I'm constantly learning. I am never not learning. So are we ready? You want to see what we're going to do? Some of? Yeah, okay. sounds so great. This, this is going to be beginners. Um, but even if, it, if, even if you're intermediate, if you're a little bit beyond that, you're still going to learn something about the paints. Um, I'm going to share with you some of the images that we're going to, okay, share, Mel. And Allie, will you keep me up on the time? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start with a floral like this. And what I'm going to call it is like a toned background where you go from the light down to the dark. This floral has absolutely no greens in it, which is what I think is absolutely hilarious as you do florals and you don't use greens. Funny? Okay, but you can also take that idea and push it another step if you like this style of painting. You can add greens to it. You can add pinks to it. So we're going to start with this, and this is going to be using some of the fluid paints and some of the heavy body paints with the soft gel gloss that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Then we're gonna move on to a more contemporary abstract where we're gonna do a color fill in the back using phthalo green, phthalo blue, my, one of my favorite colors, green gold. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to mix up some metallics with some others and do some washes with it. I'm gonna teach you how to paint with cellophane and then we're gonna do mono printing those are Nandina leaves in my backyard. So you would just go out in your yard, pick some leaves, um, whatever. I mean, you can, I, I taught this class once and some, some of the ladies, some of the gentlemen, they did ferns and that was beautiful too. So you can pick whatever you want to do and do some mono printing. Another style that we're going to do, subtractive painting. We're going to use soft gel gloss. 
um, which is my secret sauce of the painting world. We're going to build our background like this, starting with darks and then start doing subtractive painting on the top with um, color shapers. And I'm going to tell you how to get very exp inexpensive color shapers. You can take that idea. This one is actually living in Connecticut. That one's living in, you can do larger florals with it. You can change your colors. Actually, what is a color shaper, Melanie? <laughs> a color shaper is a silicone brush. Cool. Okay. They're really, really expensive. If you get them from Dick Blick or whatever art store, my color shapers come from Walmart, and they're just the same exact spatulas that you have in your kitchen. I was using spatulas before I knew what a color shaper was. Then when I went to training with Golden, they had the real color shapers. And I'm thinking, this is like my $1.50 Walmart spatula. And it's what I use. I don't use real color shapers unless it's just the little bitty, bitty ones that you need. But yeah, color shapers, silicone brushes, Walmart, Target. Love It'll it. change your life. And then we're going to talk about Matisse and his color palettes. We're going to do... Our own Matisse. I haven't figured exactly which one I want to teach, but I want to talk about his color, specifically this one where he uses the Quinn Magenta and the Thalos, the, the, the turquoises, okay? So we're going to do a little bit. We're going to learn about color blocking again, and this is layering and layering and layering, like what we're going to do on the other ones. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Any questions? Is that cool? Yeah, and if anyone has questions, just put it into the chat and I can ask um, Melanie. Okay, do you want me to do a little bit of a demo about the first one that we're going to work on? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Very excited. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up and sit down, okay? Okay. Um, oh, wait, you want me to show this camera, don't you? Hold on. I'm a little casual. Can you guys tell? This is great. Okay, here we go. Second camera. It didn't share. Oh, I have to hit this. Allie, the camera's not working. Um, hold on. Let me see. Oh wait, switch camera. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. I do something different than any other artist you'll ever uh well, maybe not. I'm the only one that I know of that uses foil sheets for my palettes. For instance, here's my sheet. I use cookie sheets, I paint, and my palette is actually foil. The reason that I use foil, after you're through, you can cover it in cellophane, and your paints will stay wet for days and days and days and days. Some of my paints in my storage closet are probably, they're gold and they're heavy body acrylic. Um, some of those paints are eight years old and they are still as usable as when I first got them. Are you familiar with the difference between fluid paints and heavy bodies? I'm not. Okay, fluids are gonna be um, like, oh my gosh, I'm not, are like, are like, let me just pour it on here. Fluids are gonna be like this, where they're fluid. They're very, they make puddles, okay? The heavy body paint, is going to be like this. It, it will be like painting with soft butter. Okay. That's what the heavy body is. See how gorgeous and luscious it is? So those are two different types of paint that there are. I use both of them. Another one that is my go-to is the golden um, high flow inks. It's, it's an acrylic ink and you can, they come in the most incredible colors if you want vibrancy in your paint their fluorescence are absolutely unbelievable so let me just show you um, for instance if we're gonna do something like this okay this one I painted on canvas alrighty the demo I also love working on board this is a 10 point board it's an uncoated sheet that I get I buy by rings from the paper store. So you can work on paper, you can work on Bristol board, you can work on canvas. What we're gonna do, see, I, I painted this one earlier. See how it goes from light to dark? 
the other, I, I'm going to back up. The other reason I love painting with foil, it's, uh, it makes you not look at the exact color up that you're trying to mix up. For instance, I'm always going to be double loading my brush, triple loading my brush. I have no idea what I'm going to get. So when I stick it on here, that's how I know what I'm going to get. A lot of people are always asking me, Mel, is this the right color? And I go, I don't know if it is. You have to put it on your substrate to figure out if it's the right color. If you don't like what's happening here, you change what's happening on your brush. That's what I always say. If you don't like something that's ha happening in your life, you change something. So if you don't like what's happening on your substrate, you change what's on your brush. So we're going to loosely, that's a little bit too burnt sienna for me. So I'm going to go back to more whites as I move down. See how I'm always just mixing the paint on the canvas? Way too red, right? So I need to neutralize it with a little burnt sienna and then move on down. Lots of loosey-goosey brush strokes. I always say, especially in beginner classes, intermediate classes, paint a little bit quicker than what you're used to. The reason you do that is because you're going to turn off the logic side of your brain and, in, and engage the creative side of your brain. Because sometimes humans try to think too realistically when painting is much more of a process and you just have to keep looking at what's happening on the canvas, see if you like it or not, and if you don't, you can definitely change it. So I'm kind of, okay, this, this is very different from that. Both are good. There's nothing wrong with either of them, right? So let me go in. I'm going to, another technique that I use a lot, I get little sheets of paper. This is the 10-point board. It's kind of like um, business card stock. Okay, so I want to go in and create some stems that my flowers are going to go on. So I'm just going to load this up with a little bit of black. Oh, now I've got black and blue on there. That's kind of cool. And I'm going to loosely put some stems in. That's going to be, be the base of where my flowers are going to go. Doesn't always have to be black. It can be white. So here are my stems. Have you guys ever painted with paper before? When I teach this in, in my in-person classes, people absolutely go crazy because they've never thought of painting. Sometimes you can just kind of drag them. So that's the beginning of my stems. So now I'm gonna go back to my flat brush, which is like one of my, Flat brushes are usually going to be my favorite. I know a lot of people like the pointed brushes. I like the flat brushes. So I'm going to, I'll put this like side by side. So I'm going to start up at the top, double loading my brush. I'm going to start putting some little bitty wispy flowers up here. Change what's on my brush. And I'm going to keep coming down. Little wispy brush strokes. As I come down even further, I'm going to get bigger brush strokes. It's kind of like you're painting like a Monet wood, whereas right, right there, that doesn't look like a flower when you just focus in on it. But when you take a step back from the substrate, it's going to turn into a flower. So you can, this is just going to be uh, like wallflowers. And I'm just, I'm just doing like all different colors on this one. But like in the PowerPoint that I showed you, you can do poppies like I have here. You can do um, uh, purple cone flowers like I did. Then when it dries just a little bit, come back, got some little centers in. Put some more leaves in if you want. And I'm, I'm doing this really quick that we'll actually do each class. We're going to complete a painting. And then if I want to, I can come back in and put more, layer it 
and put more stems in so that you have one layer of flowers underneath and then I'm building more layer of flowers on top. That's one, that's one that we're going to be working on. Does anybody have any questions about that? Do we like it? Is it cool? I love how quickly it comes to life. It does. It really does. And I, I like from in my classes, we're going to complete a project each session so that you'll walk away with the feeling of accomplishment. You will like your painting. You will, if you don't like the whole painting, you're going to like part of it, but you are going to learn a lot about the different processes. The other thing that we're going to, we can do with this. We can use soft gel gloss on this to make it a little bit more um, impasto where it's built up thicker. Do you want me to show you the next one? Uh, yeah, hold on. I have a question. You do? Um, what surface, uh, oh yeah, so what type of surface will the class work on? So I guess if it's, if it's paper or, or canvas. Okay, so I put, together, I put together a list on uh, Blick U for this class and in the order, in the supply list, there's four 11 by 14 canvases. canvases. If you don't want to get the canvases, if you want to work on paper substrates, you can do that. If you want to work on watercolor paper, you can do that. I'm going to leave it up to you. But in the supply list, I did include four canvases. If you already have canvases at home, you don't need to order the canvases. Because I work on canvases. I work on hardboard, MDF board, watercolor paper. Mm. I work on anything that stands still. <laughs> hey, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Let me show you what the other style. Yeah, one more question, Melanie. Yeah. Um, so we have a viewer, she's a plein air painter, beginner, and I'm starting with acrylics for landscape painting. Do you start with dark colors to lighter colors? Yes. Yes. There's always going to be an exception. But I start with the darker values because shadows are so important. Um, and some people are so afraid of the shadows. But I, in my classes, I make people, a class yesterday, I made people put shadows in and they all got like frightened. Oh my gosh, this is black. It's so, so dark. But you have to have it. Your painting is going to go from ugly, uglier to ugliest to beautiful. It's not going to be beautiful all the way through. It's like we all went through junior high school with <laughs> teeth and our pigtails okay your painting is not will not be beautiful all the way through it will be beautiful at the end it's like taking cupcakes out of the oven before it's done they're not done they're mushy they're raw so ugly ugly uglier to beautiful okay but yes yeah, shadows are extremely important thank you does that make sense yeah okay so this is oh can i go Okay, so this is one palette for that class, right? I'll put cellophane on it. Here's the palette for the next demo. But see how I just put cellophane on it and it will seriously stay great for a very long time. Isn't that cool? I figured that out myself. How many palettes do you have laying around your studio? A lot. <laughs> Lots a lot. And they're big. I mean, I... These are like the little plastic sheets that you get like at the catering places, but I, I have like a cookie sheets over here. I have smaller cookie sheets, but all of my palettes are foil because acrylics dry through evaporation or absorb or absorbing. And this way the foil does not absorb it. Some people will paint on parchment. Um, for palettes, but even that will absorb a little bit, but this this keeps my paints gorgeously wet Okay, so we're going to talk about subtractive painting. Has anybody done subtractive painting before? It's where, thumbs up, thumbs down, yeah. okay. it's where you're taking away painting <clears throat> this one was actually done with golden's open acrylics, which is um, a line of paints that dry very 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 slowly like oils these are great for plein air painting um they because because they dry so slow you can work them and rework them so they're great for subtractive painting okay i'm going to do subtractive painting with using fluids and the heavy bodies and this is 
can you see the different layers in here and how it's kind of the, you've got ridges built up okay this is using my favorite gel which is soft gel gloss okay it's like painting with butter it's these are the exact same palmers that are in acrylic paint it just doesn't have paint in it okay these come in gloss satin and matte i'm a gloss girl everything i do is i love glossy i was just telling Allie that one of my artist friends does everything matte so i had to send him all mats all so everything comes in mats as well so this is what i'm going to do i have some this is my color shaper i mean serious these are just spatulas and some of the spatulas i have are the really big ones but because i'm working smaller i'm going to use my my smaller color shapers okay so this is like a dollar fifty if you got a color shaper that was what a half inch thick um it would be like 25 to 30 dollars oh so, my gosh and it does the exact exact same thing okay love it okay so here's my white i've got phthalo blue i've got black i've got burnt sienna phthalo green and my two favorite colors the turquoise and the Quinn magenta, which if you start using that, your life will be changed. So I'm gonna put some of my soft gel gloss right there. Slap it down. So then I'm gonna get my big brush. I wanna start working darker. So that's a real interesting question because if somebody asked, do I work darker first or lighter first? I wanna go darker first. And in this case, I'm gonna work quite a bit darker than what that example was that I showed you, just so that you'll be able to see on the camera. So again, double loading my brush, white, burnt sienna, let's see what that does. Pretty dark, don't like it, change it, add a little bit of blue to it. Still dark, but I'm gonna get there. I don't worry about if, if a brush stroke is perfect. If I don't like it, I just paint over it. The all of our mark makings, even the bottom marks, oh there we go, even the marks that are underneath are really important. Every mark that you make is important. You may end up covering it up. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker than what I normally would just so that you'll be able to see it well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black to it. So I'm just painting a, a color base down here, okay? And when you do yours for this class, you can choose your own palette. So you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna put a little bit of this golden turquoise down. Okay, there's my base. Oh, I messed up. Not a problem, go back over it. I just don't worry about if every brush stroke is correct. It's a little too blue. I want to neutralize it some, so I'm going to go back and put some burnt sienas on it. There's my base, okay? Now, let's play with the soft gel gloss. The gel is going to build it up a little bit like an impasto. You know, the impasto are the really thick paintings, kind of like Van Gogh would do the thick painting. Do I have any the impasto? No, the impastos are behind me right now. So anyway, here's my, there's my white. There's my soft gel gloss, okay? They look very similar, right? So I'm gonna get some soft gel gloss. I'm gonna get a little bit of white. I'm gonna start putting some edges in. Put it down. The cool thing about the silicone, it bends beautifully. And you can paint, it's kind of like, see the lines that I'm making? So it's, it's kind of like, I'm beginning to introduce to have some stems in here. Like with the silicone color shaper, I can do it very lightly, leave lots of soft gel gloss there. I can do it a little bit harder and totally remove what's underneath. But I can make the most beautiful ridges with this. I do paintings with the soft gel gloss, 
and you can add other colors to it. For instance, I'm just gonna play, okay? This isn't the real thing, I'm just playing. Let's say I wanna use some of this Quinn Magenta with the soft gel gloss. Put this on here, and then I can start some really cool magenta. It dries really high gloss. It keeps the, um, the depth to it. It doesn't dry flat. It's going to have a little rise to it. Okay, so there's my background. I can play a little bit more. Okay, there's my background. Now I'm going to get my little bitty brush that I call Baby Bear. And I think I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to do, you can do whatever color flowers you want. And I'm just going to lightly use the soft gel gloss so that it, it changes the opacity. So sometimes it's very light. Sometimes it's a little bit darker. And it's really like you're painting like a Monet. It's just simple little brush strokes. Put it down, leave it alone. I can do the same thing with my stems. I'm getting soft gel gloss with a little bit of the darker phthalo green. Although on your supply list, I put hooker's green because Blick was out of the phthalo green until the end of December. And the other thing that I do, see how I twist, I, I twist my brush in between my fingers. It's going to make you get the most imperfect line. It's a little bit too light. Add a little bit of black to it. See how it's very wiggly? Just like nature, it's very organic. So that's just like a twist of the brush. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I love how it also picks up the other kind of the paint and how it evenly distributes it with the twist. Well, yeah, and then the colors that are underneath kind of come to the top. So you're still mixing paint on your substrate. I always tell my students, mix the paint on the canvas. For the most part, you're always mixing your paint on the canvas. It is a huge jump from the palette to over here because all of the colors that are over here are going to affect what shade, what tint, what tone you want to use. So just a little dab, then put a little stem on it. We go it all the way down. So we're going to do the whole, and you can choose whatever color flowers you want. I just went with the Quinn Magenta and the Turquoise. Kind of cool. What do we think? Very cool. Any how questions? long does that take to, how long does it, the, um, the, the soft gloss take to dry? Thank couple you. Days. Couple days. Take a couple of days. And how do you, you just put it in a drying rack off to the side? Yeah, I have lots of tables in the studio, so I just set it off to the side. Don't let the cats in because the first thing they go to is straight for the palettes or the wet paint. So, yeah, they have to stay outside. Okay, mm -hmm. any questions? Um, I, there, there was a question about um, the class you'll be teaching is how many, uh, what's the max number of people that we're allowing to this class? Was it 10 to 15? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have a couple in Santa Fe that already want to sign up. So as soon as it's live, let me know. And I was going to actually, I'm going to Santa Fe on Saturday. So I'm actually going to take them some of the supplies. Oh, how nice. How far is that drive for you? 10 hours. It's great. Ooh, drive. The other thing that I wanted, I wanted to show you, and I think that we'll do this in, in one or two of our, in one of the classes, if we have time, let me move the messiness. Actually, I have a question. How do you, when that finally dries, how do you, do you put a protective layer on top of it? Yeah, I varnish everything yeah. with gloss. I, I'm the gloss girl. I varnish everything with gloss um, varnish. And it's golden. I, um, it's, it's over in the closet. We can talk about that during one of the classes because it's, it's very important to varnish because it's going to protect it from the UV rays. Mm. And it also gives it, the, again, the... I put three or four layers of varnish on mine because I really like the way it plays with the depth of the painting and the highlights are really highlighted and the low lights 
are low. So it really, to me, it brings a lot to the paintings. What we're gonna, what I wanna do in one of our classes, we're, this is a lot of different colors. Quin magenta, manganese blue, green gold. These are like iridescent uh, bright gold, which I have on the list. I also have um, the interference blue that we're going to work with when we do this painting. Interference blue is gorgeous because it acts like it changes colors. It goes from a neutral to whatever color it is. It comes in blues, oranges, reds, violets. But we'll do a little color chart like this with the iridescent gold and the interference blue so that you can see what it does to the different values of the paint. You can't really see the sheen from this camera, but when you do this lot, when you do it for real with your own cow, with your own color sheet, you'll be amazed at the, the range of colors that you can get with um, this paint. On the, for the supply list, Golden is one of the more expensive brands. I have some of the Golden paint on there. I also have um, some of the Blick, a lot of the Blick paint on there because it's quite a bit less expensive and I just didn't want people to get sticker shock um, with the supply list. And I, I bet some of the people already have their, their go-to colors that they like. And that's fine as well. And that's fine as well. It really is fine. Um, so, one, two questions. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see faces. Okay, okay. is that good? Yeah, it's great. Um, hey. so, two, so two questions. Um, okay. Let's see here. Uh, what effect do you get if you use a matte varnish? It's matte. It's not shiny. Oh, it's just matte. It's just matte. Yeah, not shiny. And then, have you painted on glass before? I actually have. Do you want to see it? Yes. <laughs> the bathroom hold on yeah and also while we're waiting um anyone here if you want to be on the pal mailing list um like or, or e-blast where you'll find out more about more demos you can actually um just email not email me put your email in the chat just send it to me privately and i'll add you to our mailing list so that you can find out more about these about other demos and classes Sorry, I was just plugging pal while you stepped away. As you should, as you should. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you this. Okay, so this is done with high flow inks. Oh, I have to go back to the camera, don't I? Hold, please. Uh, share. Okay, so I also paint this cow and her name is Belle. And she's like, um, everybody likes her. There's a lot of her in California. She's in Germany, she's in Ireland, she's in France, she's in Italy. So anyway, this is the one I, I kept. Okay, are you, are you ready? <laughs> yes. There she is. This oh. is Belle. This is done on glass. This is done with the fine, this is done with uh, golden high flow inks with the fine line applicator. The black is done first. Do you guys know what a fine line applicator is? You want me to go get one real quick? Yes, if that's, if that's okay. okay. It's in the closet. Hold on. I'm coming back. Okay, these yeah. will change your life. These are fine line applicators. These are so awesome. So what I did, I did the black first. And this is on the back side of the glass, right? And then I went in with the high flow inks, and then I painted behind it. So it's like you're working backwards. Oh, cool. So the okay. drawings on one side of the glass and then the paints on the back? Everything's on the back. Oh, everything's on the back. Oh, we could do a class like this. Do you want to? That'd be very cool. Okay, so let me show you what a fine line applicator is. Okay, this is with the golden um, high flow inks, yep. which uh, are kind of, they, they're like airbrush inks. Okay, this is a fine line applicator. There's red, there's white, there's that. You can get them from Amazon, okay? It's like painting with a needle. And is that acrylic paint as well? Everything I do is acrylic. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not an oil girl. I am turning my acrylics into watercolors because everybody thinks that I have this new series that they're, they're watercolors. Okay, see it's a needle? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you can paint. That's how you do it. That, 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 that. I have a lot of this. 
in my paintings. Um, the discs that are behind me that you can't, those discs right over there, I do a lot of this technique in it, okay? But the cool thing is it has a needle, so they always stay dry, and that's how you close it up. Of course, I can't do it now. There, there's red. You can put whatever color you want in here. I use black a lot. Okay. But yeah, I do a lot of classes with uh, the fine line applicators and drawing in reverse. But these are like awesome. And then you can just do all kind of cool drips. Great stuff. I love these. A lot of people don't know what fine line applicators are. But again, it's going it, to, it, if it's your style, you're going to love what it can do. So I wasn't supposed to talk about that, but I did. <laughs> okay. Actually, there's a, there was another question. Yeah. Um, behind you. So I guess back to, so unshare your, your camera. Okie dokie, Smokey. Stop share. Yeah. Um, there, to your, over your right shoulder, there's these beautiful circular paintings. What are those? Those are my discs. Um, they're MDF board. Can I see it? Oh, how cool. And these have resin on them. I work in resin a lot. And this there, it's like two layers, right? This one actually has um, golden fiber paste, which is like, it's, it's built up, it's impasto, and, it's, and it ends up being exactly like watercolor paper. Golden Beautiful. fiber paste. I do a lot of work with the fiber paste. But yeah, I sell a lot of these discs. They're gorgeous. And they're MDF board. Thank you. But yeah, I'm super excited about this class and to have friends in California. Yay! So the um, the link I'm, I'm checking. I have my colleague working on the class link. It's not quite up. It's not up just yet, but the class will be on our website uh, today. Uh, so if you go to PacificArtLeague.org uh, and go to uh, painting classes, it'll be listed on there. Uh, and yeah, we're very excited to have you, Melanie. Um, I know there's a, a lot of people are excited to learn um, some new uh, acrylic techniques, especially beginners. And um, what's your website? So people can see your work on your website. Okay, it's Melanie. Do you want me to put it in the chat? Would that be the best way? Or I can transcribe for you. How about that? Melanie. Okay, MelanieMBrannon.com. M. Brannon. B-R-A-N-N-A-N. No, I have a lot of my work um, up. I haven't put my class on there yet, so Ellie, Ellie, don't be, I'll put it up. As soon as the link is done, I'll put oh, it up. Of course, I'll send you the link. And then if anyone has questions um, for me, you can email me at um, Allie at PacificArtLeague.org. I can help answer questions about this class or any um, of our other classes at Pacific Art League. And Melanie, I'm so excited. Me too. December 6th is the day. Right? December 6th? December 9th. Thank you. December, December the 9th. 9th. Wednesday, December the 9th. And, so and, you're, and, and you are in Dallas. So at least I got that right. <laughs> I think I'm contagious with my like bad numbers. I'm so sorry, Allie. Oh, it's okay. It's so uh, I'm going to take a Christmas break and then we'll come back and finish the class for two weeks in January. And I really love that. Like, I mean, for me, like I love being able to like leave a class with something. Like, with Always. I, I, I like I like to teach, but I also want people to walk away with a sense of this is what I've done. And now I'm going to take this idea and then I'm going to do that to it. Yeah. So, um, and I always love like sharing. I'm such a critic to myself. Like I'll paint something that goes, oh, this is terrible. And then I show it to like my husband or my family or my friends. And they're just like, this is amazing. Oh my God, you should be a painter. It's like, okay. Like we are our like, own worst critic. But yeah. I, I also say, even if you don't like it at the time, put it away, come back and look at it in the morning. It's going to be a totally different way of looking at it. I teach a, I teach a couple uh, every Monday and they hate it. And that's not exaggeration. What they did two weeks ago. I always take it home. I mount it for them beautifully. And then I take it back. 
And they said, this is not what we did. I go, this is exactly what you did. You haven't seen it for two weeks. Yeah. It is now beautifully, beautiful, ready to frame. And they were blown away. Take a step back, yeah. let it rest and come back. It's like having a good night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah. You have you have to take a break and let it rest if you don't like it. But there's always going to be a good part of a painting. Always. Sometimes it may not be the whole painting, but you're always going to learn, and there's always going to be a piece of the painting that is like just blow your socks off. Well, that's so wonderful, and thank you. And hopefully, we'll uh, we can do a glass painting workshop. That sounds like a lot of fun. We could do that. Yeah, it'd be fun. Maybe in the new year. Um, so again, you know, we can do. You can get. It's hard to point. You can get round substrates. We could do one of those. I mean, we can do whatever you want. It's we'll like keep you busy. It's limitless what we can do. I love teaching. It's like, yeah, it's amazing. And I loved your tip on. I always love um, hacks, and I love your tip on the the spatulas. The spatulas, same thing. Oh, crazy. Thank you. I love that. It, oh, you're so I'm welcome. You're so welcome. Do not buy the expensive ones. It's exactly the same. Made my day.